Here we are again, back by popular demand. Giselle back there. Hello. And this is our mom over here. And we're cooking today. We are cooking macaroni and cheese. Because I requested some macaroni and cheese for tomorrow's Easter Sunday dinner. And I'm having a little wine to go with it right now. Woo. All right. Anyway, this is uh, going to be the start of the safety valve test. Now, uh, I'm going to show you on a board after I cut from this. I'm going to show you on a board what we've been doing and how I want to do this test. And of course, you know, all the experts on there, the theorists, they got this theory, that theory, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. Well, we're going to find out what's going to happen when I actually do the actual test in a couple of weeks. But first of all, I want to do some preliminary, um, what I'm going to do, uh, you know, preliminaries on how I'm going to set it up with the pipes and so on. So that's what we're going to do now. In the meantime, making macaroni and cheese. Oh, look, at, look at this. What, you, oh, what was that? The butter? Butter. All right. butter. What do we got? What's the recipe? Tell us the recipe. Got the milk and the egg was together, and now I added the butter. All right. We put a little wine in that, too, or no? No. No wine in it? Okay, I got two cups of and I got to put the cheese in. And I got to whisk it. Hey, Mom, what are you out. doing? <laughs> the usual, cleaning dishes, right? Washing dishes. That doesn't matter. I talk. We'll see you later on. Later on. All right, well, just to give you some idea, the objective here is to test the safety valves when you, someone goes to a club, the first thing they tell them is, oh, you only got one safety valve, one hole in the boiler. They're not going to punch, especially with a steel boiler, they're not going to punch two holes in the boiler. They're anxious to run this locomotive. So what do they do? They jump in their car. They run down to Ace Hardware. They buy a couple of elbows, tees, nipples, and what all, and they put this thing together, and they put two safety valves on there. Number one is, I'm saying that that isn't correct because it's only one hole, and let's say it's quarter inch, maybe quarter inch pipe will handle two one-eighth pipe safety valves, maybe. Three-eighths, probably half inch, no doubt. Well, that's what I intend to prove. Hi, everybody. Um, this is the beginning of the test. This is a, just a preliminary discussion about making the um, safety valve test on with two safety valves on a T. Now, I've been totally misunderstood on the chassis. Now, here, here's the thing. The case scenario is this. A guy comes to the club. He, he's not affiliated with any club. He gets in touch with the secretary, says, hey, I built this uh, engine. And I want to come over and test it, uh, run it, and I want to join the club, and so on and so on. So he joins the club, comes over, and he's got to get his boiler tested because they say the bo there's a boiler test, and they check it out to make sure it's got the gauge glass right, and so on and so on. The normal things that are done in a club when a new engine comes out or somebody comes with an engine from another club. All right, they say, well, you only have one safety. And he has one dome, one thing in the middle, one safety. He, then, he never um, consulted with anybody. He didn't realize that you needed two safeties for whatever reasons. Whatever he read, whatever somebody told him along the lines, he only has one safety. Now, he has a quarter inch pipe plug or quarter inch tap in the boiler on the top of the dome. Whether it be a flat plate, whatever the case may be, he can fix it the next time he comes out. But right now he wants to run the engine. So what does he do? He goes to a hardware store, he buys a couple of tees and sticks them on air and puts the safety valves up on some Rube Goldberg thing and he's going to, oh, we got two safety valves. Okay. What I'm saying, I'm going to say it again. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is that he has a quarter inch, one quarter inch pipe plug, pipe, pipe tap hole. He's going to buy a quarter inch nipple, a T, a couple of street elbows, and put these two safeties on there. What I'm saying, 
the safety valve that he's using, which is the standard valve, like Kohl's makes one, Mercer makes one, Superscale makes one, some other people make them. They have one eighth pipe with a quarter inch, approximately quarter inch hole with a seat about, um, about that size, about 375, about a three eighth seat, okay? But with a quarter inch initial hole in the, in, in the safety valve. Okay. He's going to put it on a quarter, on a on a on a quarter inch pipe. Now, I'm not saying that a three eighths would probably work. I'm not saying a half inch. I know would work. What I'm saying is quarter inch and smaller. When the first safety valve goes off at 120 and the second one set five pounds higher. No matter how hard you fire that engine and how much you got the blower up, how much coal or oil you pour on the pouring on the coal, that second one will not go off because you're changing the differential in that piece of pipe. And the one valve, as good as mine relieve, good as Barry's relieve, and I, I don't know about the coal's valve, that's yeah, a little bit weaker. But anyway, mine blow off like Forget it, the, the pressure will drop right down. Okay, so keeping that in mind, I believe that the second one will not pop. It definitely won't pop on one eighth. Very close, maybe on quarter, but I doubt it. Three eighths is better. Half inch, I believe it would work. But you got to remember, the guy came out there with one safety. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the theory and the thing and the bing and the boom and the bop and the beep. Forget all that theory. I'm not talking about theory. I'm talking about practical experience. Practical, real experience. Okay? Now, this is what I plan. I'm going to have a dome. Here's the dome. I'll draw it big. Okay, you can see that. I'll make it a little thicker so you can see it. Here's a dome. Top of the boiler. Okay. Got one outlet in the middle. Quarter inch pipe. John Doe's going to run down to Ace Hardware. He's going to buy a nipple. Going to put a T on it. I'll buy two street elbows or any other kind of elbows. And he's going to put a safety valve in there. Okay? What I'm saying, this one's set at 120, this one 125. What I'm saying, this valve will pop, 120, this one will not, okay? That's what I'm saying, especially the way this elbow is set up. Now, I want to go about over that in a minute, especially the way this elbow is set up. Now, I'm going to make one of these. What I'm going to do is, in the middle here, what, the way I'm going to set it up is, and let's see, yeah, you can see over here, I'm going to make it like this. I'm going to put a, val a ball valve here. Well, don't need one there. I'm going to put a, well, on a K4, I'm going to draw the way it is on a K4. As a, you know, there's a bell pair firebox and there's two, two things like this, right? Quarter inch. I reduce them down to one eighth. I'm going to put a, a ball valve here. We'll draw that with the handle sticking out like that. And I'm going to put a safety valve here. All right? I'm going to put a ball valve here. No, don't need a ball valve there. I'm going to put a, a dipple there, a T, two elbows. Now a ball valve, another ball valve. Now my safety.
Okay. Just put screw. 120, 125, and 125 over here. This one. Okay. And this is the test. Gonna shut this valve. So now we're on these two. We're gonna see if it works. Okay? Works, don't work, whatever. I'm gonna do it. Then I'm gonna shut this valve, the 125 here, and only use these two and show that it will pop. This one will pop and that one will pop. I know it will because I've done it many times. But I'm saying it's not gonna work on a T. Now it may very well work. That's the idea of this test. It's nothing to do with theory. I cannot stress that enough. Forget the theory. I don't care about theory. I don't want to know nothing about theory. I want to know about reality. This is reality. Okay, now, that's the way I'm going to test it. I'm going to test it with quarter-inch pipe, and I'm going to make one up with eighth-inch pipe. And we're going to see how it works. See if it works. By the way, these are going to be quarter-inch ball valves because I want the flow to come completely through. Now, I just want to show you one other thing here. I'm going to race the bottom half of this because I want it in the middle of the I want it in the middle of the um, board so you can see it. All you plumbers out there, the genius plumbers we got the, with the you know sheepskin. I don't know if you can see it over here. I'm going to show it through there. I got my sheepskin on the wall right here. I got one. But I don't flaunt it around like some of them guys on there. Anyway, the point is this. There's two ways to hook up a T. The right way and the wrong way. The, ro the wrong way, if you have to do it that way, then that, then that be, let it set be that. It's called bullheading a T. Old time plumber taught me this. Here's your T. Something like that, right? Like that. This is the source. In. Out, out, in, out, out. That's called bullheading a T. Exactly the way we're going to do it here. That's not the proper way to hook up a T. The proper way to hook up a T is like this. And I'm going to do it both ways. In, out, out. Anybody... Any plumber will tell you that's the proper way to hook up a T. The other way is called a bullhead, obviously, because it's got, looks like a bull horns, right? Looks like a bull's horns. That's why they call it a bullhead. It's not, this is the way to hook up a T. Anytime you hook up a T, that's the way it should be hooked up. Even for, for anything. I don't know about flow or this, and nobody's ever done it. But I'm going to hook it up this way, like this, because that's the way normally everybody would hook it up. And I'm going to hook it up this way with it, like, um, you know, have, you know, safety valve up here. I have a safety valve up here. And then an elbow. Another safety valve up here. Okay, I'm going to do it like that. To see if it makes any difference. Don't know if it will. But anyway, that's the beginning of the test, the preliminary beginning of the test. And uh, I hope to have perform this. Now, look, I'm going to say it one more time. Forget about your theories. I don't want to hear no theory. I don't want to hear theory. I don't want to hear, well, this is the way, and this is what Joe Blow in 1918 written. I don't want to hear any of that. I'm talking about now, on our hobby, the way it generally happens. Right there. That's the way it generally happens. And that's what I'm going to test to prove that's not the proper way. Now, one thing it does do, it does, if this valve should fail, which is unlikely, but it guess it's possible, this one will then work. That's the only thing it will do. It does have, that, and that's what people think the, the two safety valve theory is for. That's not what it's for. What it's for is when you have two valves set at 120, and 125, this is what should be. I try to get my, my, my safeties at, uh, two is ultimately, seven is good, 
minus. This is minus seven, minus two, the relief pressure. That's why I don't like, I don't think our hobby, some, some geniuses in the hobby said, it had to be 120, can't go over 120. Why? Why can't it be 130, 135? Let me tell you something. I tried it with my new safety valve. I tried it on the K4. And you know what? The injectors work better. The, the steam is a little drier. You want to have, talking about superheated steam. Don't worry about superheated steam. Just jack the pressure up 10 degrees. It'll be 10, 10 pounds. You'll be surprised. It'll be drier and everything. 130, 135, and even 135 and 140. There's nothing wrong with that. That's only a 15 pound differential. The boilers can handle it and there's no problem with that. But yet we got some of these narrow-minded, narrow gauge, they're tunnel, they got tunnel vision. What they read in books, wrong. Jeez, oh man, the boil, prototype boilers run on 300 pounds with half inch sheets. Please, we got quarter inch minimum and we're running a, a third of that or half. Really, okay. So you got 120. Now, this one over here, when this finally pops, if, if you should, if, if this one pops and it's trying to reseat, but yet the pressure's building, the pressure's still building, and you get to 125, this one pops, this one should be below, the reseat should be below this one here. So it should reseat at like say one, 119 on to 118, 115. To, to relieve the pressure down below the first primary valve. The secondary valve is there to relieve the building, building of building of pressure. Now, look, you're running a steam engine. What are you doing? Ha ha, he he, smoking a cigar? You're running a steam locomotive. Pay attention to what you're doing. Now, if the boiler's going that crazy, Put some water in a boiler. You don't need water in a boiler, open the fire door. Shut the blower down, run your locomotive. If you're oil fired, turn the oil off. If you're propane fired, same deal, turn it off. Coal fire, you subdue the fire. You subdue the fire by opening the door, blow, throwing the blower down, put a little more coal on. That'll, that'll relieve the, some of that pressure, some of that heat, okay? Run your locomotive. Anyway, that's gonna be the test and hopefully we'll perform that coming up this Tuesday. So we'll see you again when I'm ready to get the locomotive out and fire it up, hopefully on Tuesday.